just kind of comes with the territory of social media, putting your best foot forward causes you to feel very insecure about your insecurities. I've dealt with eating disorders, with restricting calories during the week, but then binging on weekends. I've been there, I've been through all of that, and if you have, then you know these thoughts, even though they seem silly or shallow, doesn't make it less of a struggle and less serious for you. And to know that she had the exact same struggle as me, I thought if that was that real for her and she humbled herself enough to share that to her almost millions of followers, then why shouldn't I be able to do the same for you guys? If there's nothing else you take, take this from this video. It should be less about numbers, more about nourishment. Can you wave and say hi? Hi guys! <laughs> Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back, or if it's your first time, then welcome to our channel. So if you've been following along for a while, then you know that I am in fact 28 weeks pregnant, which means I am just on the very beginning of third trimester, the final home stretch. So I've got under three months to go. My due date is in early July. I'm hoping for July 1st, even though they've told me the 1st, the 3rd, and the 6th. <laughs> We're gonna hope for the 1st. That being said, I have encountered a lot of body image struggles. I've struggled in the past. I've actually created a YouTube video that if you've been around here for a while, then you've probably seen Changes Part 1, which I made this past summer. So I documented basically my journey going plant-based and my body transformation story of going from overweight to underweight to pregnant to what I would have considered the best shape of my entire life and how I got there in a healthful way, both mentally and physically. So I thought this would be the perfect time to make a part two. And the reason being is I was going to make a pregnancy third trimester update or recap, but I'm like, well, I just started third trimester. And really what's more on my heart rather than talking strictly about pregnancy is talking about body image. So this can definitely apply to you whether you're pregnant or not. Of course, I'm gonna talk about pregnancy and body changes, but even aside from that, if it's something you've struggled with, with body shaming, with negative self image, maybe body dysmorphia or an eating disorder like binging or purging, all of these things, restricting, over exercising, I've experienced almost all of these things, so I hope that on some level you can relate at somewhere along the line, and if you can, if you have, I would love if you would give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join us here. Become part of the Eat Move Rest fam. We'd love to get to know you guys, so be sure to pop a comment, leave us some love, share your experience, maybe what's worked for you, what hasn't, what you're currently struggling with, Let's get to know each other and become an even more tight-knit community. If you know anyone who might appreciate this video, who might find it helpful, definitely shoot it their way. You can always follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram as well, at Aaron Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. So you would think these sit-down videos are the easiest to shoot, but they are quite the opposite. In fact, they are the most difficult to shoot because literally almost every time I do them, I feel like what I said either was too jumbled up or didn't make sense or I talked too long, or it was just plain boring. No matter what, it all comes back to this negative thought process, I am not enough, I am not enough. But it's just plain wrong. I'm just sitting here being vulnerable, sharing my experience because I know that it means something to me and it's on my heart and it's on my mind. So it's gotta mean something to at least one other person out there. If only one other person takes something from this and grows from it and feels more comforted from it, then that's a win in my book. So like I said, I'm at 28 weeks pregnant so far. This is my second plant-based vegan pregnancy. Number one was Mr. Max, who is now 28 months almost. So just over two years old, he'll be two and a half when his little brother or sister arrives. We're not sure what we're having, we are waiting, so it's kind of difficult. I was feeling like it was gonna be a boy and then girl, now I'm thinking boy again. Setting all of that aside, let's jump in where Changes Part 1 left off and where I'm at now. So, at that stage, I was, like I said, in the most healthy, physically, mentally shape of my life postpartum, which I was thrilled that I was able to get there. I primarily attribute it to focusing less on calories and more on nourishment 
and nutrition and focusing less on cardio and focusing more on weight training. So building up my strength was two parts. It was, you know, keeping a healthy balance in the gym between weights and cardio and really seeing my body thrive on that and feel less fatigued, less of that adrenal fatigue going on. And then also in the kitchen, yes, I'm not afraid to eat protein and I'm not afraid to eat fruit and I'm not afraid to eat fat, but just taking it all in, all of the whole healthy plant foods and enjoying them in abundance and less of that restriction. That being said, if you've ever struggled with body dysmorphia or body shaming, or mental issues around your body image, or maybe just with anxiety, stress, depression, all of these things. We can learn coping mechanisms and management techniques, but that doesn't make us immune from experiencing these negative emotions ever again in our lives. Just like we repeatedly experience positive emotions, we can repeatedly experience negative emotions. We have to allow the full spectrum into our lives. So the best thing, if you don't take anything else away from this video, is to really focus less on thought stopping and blocking of emotions and more so to let them flow freely through and in you. And a technique that has really helped me is meditation, to just be less annoyed or troubled by my feelings or thoughts and more so just to be aware of them so I know what state my body is in every morning but I don't get hung up on pain points and I know where I'm at mentally but again I don't let my emotions become hang-ups for me I let them flow freely so that has all helped tremendously with just being more present and if you're more present you're less likely to future trip so that's something that really tripped me up first pregnancy was knowing my body was gonna change but not knowing how and how negatively it might change. It really just caused me to future trip and freak out about <laughs> what if I get stretch marks? And that sounds so shallow, but it was one of my biggest fears was stretch marks and varicose veins. And sure enough, I experienced a lot of the varicose veins that really threw me for a loop especially first pregnancy because it was a brand new experience having these veins that started to protrude and bulge in the backs of my legs and feeling like it had pregnancy had aged me it had stolen my beauty like they say dusty said he'll never forget it I've, i had multiple breakdowns one in particular in the shower one night just so distraught and wondering like why would god make this you know a thing that women have to go through why am i having to go through this being such a perfectionist, growing up, straight A student, top 3% of my class, top 10, overachiever, constantly varied in books and studying, and always wanting that you know gratification for myself and from teachers and from my parents, coming from a family of like high academically achieving individuals and physicians and lawyers and all of that really drove me into a state of perfectionism and then getting to a point where I actually had fallen off the wagon, my grades suffered, I partied, binged, all the things, gained weight and then realized it and then that's when I started to restrict because I kind of felt like I had lost that sense of who I was. So something that I could do that was within my control was control what I was eating and how I was exercising. So between the over exercising and the under eating, I was getting my weight in control and therefore I felt like the rest of my life was getting in control as well. So then I got to a point where I would look back at pictures and felt super emaciated and very ashamed even from wedding pictures to be able to look at those makes me cringe to this day sometimes and it makes me sad for myself to realize that when I look at myself, whether it was overweight or underweight, I cringe rather than having love for myself. That's a really difficult place to be. So if you can resonate with that, if that's something that you've dealt with, know that you're not alone. And I know being on social media, <laughs> you see a lot of my pictures and posts and probably think that everything's just always going swimmingly even during pregnancy. but. As I take my selfie on Easter Sunday, I was wearing the same outfit. What you don't see is behind the scenes, behind on the backs of my legs, these protruding veins that have become even worse this pregnancy than they were last pregnancy. And again, feeling a little bit more stable because I know what to expect this time around as compared to first pregnancy, but the fact that they're worse this time has worn on me and grinded on me a little bit worse and caused some of the body image struggles and issues to come back again. 
and you know there are so many things in pregnancy like that and just the fact that your waistline expands so at first for me it was really difficult to keep trying to squeeze into my same jean shorts you know it was different with Max being pregnant in the winter where you know I could just wear fluffy stretchy things all the time and now having a spring and summer third trimester is really going to be difficult especially you know just coming back from our retreat in Costa Rica if you saw that recap video. My biggest concern was all of a sudden knowing that I wasn't going to be in this best shape of my life for my bikini, you know, on the beach and in the waterfalls and that I was going to have this, you know, semi-pregnant looking, is, is she pregnant or is, is it a beer gut kind of, you know, look <laughs> in a swimsuit was very disheartening. I had many sleepless nights leading up to the retreat nervous anxious days and tears were shed. Dusty can again vouch for that. And again, it seems super shallow, but if it's something that you've struggled with, then you totally understand that, you know, it's not something that I can control. It's just something that I really have to fight the urge to um, feel these negative feelings about myself. And I was very, very nervous um, to go to the retreat with <laughs> these veins on the backs of my legs and just didn't want anybody to think or see anything that was less than perfect about me because, you know, it just kind of comes with the territory of social media. Putting your best foot forward causes you to feel very insecure about your insecurities and you don't want them exposed a lot of the times, but I'm here to expose them. I've, I've dealt with, you know, quote unquote, eating disorders with restricting calories during the week, but then binging on weekends and, you know, the extreme weight fluctuations and focusing so heavily on calories and caloric restriction and stepping on the scale but only doing it after a good bowel movement for example or in the gym just working out so so hard and running super long distances just to try and punish myself for whatever I had binged on the day before so I've been there I've been through all of that and if you have then you know these thoughts even though they seem silly or shallow, they're there and that doesn't change anything just because it seems silly to some people. It doesn't make it less of a struggle and less serious for you. So yes, I'm gonna be brave enough to insert either some photos and or videos of the backs of my leg, my varicose veins that have seriously just made me feel super self-conscious. Um, mainly because I saw this Instagrammer who I follow, who I really look up to, who has almost a million followers, who was just recently pregnant and just recently had a baby, and who I've really identified with, and it's been fun to see her along her journey in her second pregnancy. And she one day shared a photo of her veins, and it was just insane. They were so, so bad at the end of her pregnancy. And she has now since then shared that they have almost completely diminished, which gives me this ray of hope that my body will bounce back. But aside from that, it's like it doesn't even matter. What mattered most to me in that moment was everything felt okay because I knew that she had experienced that too, whereas I had kind of held her on a pedestal because she was like a supermodel goddess in these awesome stylish outfits and to know that she had the exact same struggle as me no matter how silly it may seem it was real for her too and so i thought if that was that real for her and she humbled herself enough to share that to her almost millions of followers then why shouldn't i be able to do the same for you guys and for all of my friends and followers you know, if it can help just one single person, if one person DMs me after this video or comments below or reaches out because they've struggled with the same issues, it's worth it to me. And I feel like I owe it to you guys to just be totally transparent that not every perfect post comes from a perfect place, that there's a lot of inner turmoil along with the inner joy and happiness and excitement of life there's also times of turmoil and distress and anxiety and despair that we all have to go through we all have to feel through and there's times when i look when i take a selfie and i have to take it 25 times before i post it on my stories or before i even save it to my own camera roll we're just so hard on ourselves and 
Again, it's something that you don't become immune to forever just because you learn coping mechanisms or techniques to manage these issues. It's great to seek out therapy and counseling to get those tools in your toolbox because they most definitely can help. That being said, it doesn't mean that you're never gonna struggle again in your life. The same goes for being plant-based. Just because you go plant-based doesn't mean you're never going to have irregular blood work again, or it doesn't mean that you won't get cancer or some other kind of illness or COVID-19. No matter what it is, you're not immune. Something else I've struggled with that's come back again as far as body image is the size of my clothing. So it seems like the constant recurring theme here is numbers, numbers, numbers. So I have worried again about the number on the scale the number of my clothing sizes and the number as far as calories go. And if there's nothing else you take, take this from this video. It should be less about numbers, more about nourishment. What I started doing, instead of worrying so much about the numbers, I had a girlfriend reach out to me who said, I had three pregnancies, you know this, and I felt the same each time too. And by third pregnancy, I just finally let myself go up a clothing size and I felt so much more comfortable and it made me think less about my size because my clothes were comfortable. So just go up a size and go with it wear stretchy things, and so that helped tremendously. I've been wearing these cute t-shirt dresses, and I feel so much more comfortable and less restricted, and she was right. Like, I'm thinking less about how uncomfortable I am and how tight things are, and it makes me focus less on that number. So that definitely helps, and whether it's a pregnancy thing that's caused you to gain weight and go up a size, or whether it's just weight gain in general, just go up a size, give yourself grace, along the journey. It doesn't mean that you can't still work towards weight loss, it just means in the process, where are you right now? Rather than clinging to that size whatever, go up a size to where you're currently at and give yourself grace where you're at while continuing to progress towards your goals. As far as calories go, you know, it's really difficult if you've fallen into restricting in the past and extreme calorie counting. When you're pregnant, your body is going to require more of you. You're growing a human inside and rather than focusing on, oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight because I'm getting so fat, because I'm eating so much, you need to focus more on the life force within and how can I nourish that life force within. So meditation has really helped me tremendously. There's an app called Headspace that helps tremendously. They even have a pregnancy track that's 30 days long. So a lot of them have really helped me to just kind of focus on my body in a positive way and to focus on this ray of light beaming from the center and exuding outward and it continues to spread and create more lightness and more brightness and more warmth and all of the good things and it flows from within to outside of you to others around you and it really truly helps you to just feel like this aura of lightness that has helped me a ton when it comes to all of that. Well, you guys, wish me luck. Like I said, at 28 weeks, I am now just on the cusp of third trimester, which there's a lot of negative connotation around it. You know, everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's so uncomfortable, you know, and your belly just gets so big and you just keep stretching. And it's like, that kind of language just doesn't do anyone any good, whether you've had body image struggles or not. So instead, I'm just trying to focus on taking things literally day by day, minute by minute, just one step at a time and just enjoying the process. And being really present helps a ton, but also having the foresight to know that someday down the road, I'm going to miss these times of my life. I'm going to say, why didn't I embrace those times? That was like the, 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 the peak of life, of existence, was bringing new life into this world. So knowing ahead of time that I'm going to feel that someday and reminding myself to do my best to be present and to feel that now, whether I truly feel it or not, if you can almost trick yourself into feeling just completely nourished and whole and pure just as you are, it can help a ton. I'm just here to let you guys know that you know, even though I was in a good place, you can still fall back into old habits, patterns, negative ways of thinking, being, and doing. But that doesn't mean that you throw in the towel. It just gives you all the more reason 
to continue on with healthy habits if you've let something go maybe working it back into your life again like i said i've gotten the morning routine under my belt again which has really helped tremendously to do my morning meditation with the headspace app and usually i'll read some type of scripture from one of my um, bible apps and i'll do some kind of journaling just stream of consciousness maybe today i'm going to journal about gratitude maybe today it's going to be about something i'm struggling with Maybe another day it can be something more outward and think about others instead of self. That can help a ton. And just being able to connect with others can help you a lot as well. So that's why I'm making this video because I want to be relatable to you guys. I wanna let you guys in and let you know that you're not alone. And I wanna feel like I'm not alone. Leave me comments below, let me know what you've struggled with and overcome, how you've overcome it. I'll just close this by saying, focus less on numbers and more on nourishment. So we're bombarded by numbers that are supposed to dictate our self-worth and how much we love ourselves, whether it's the number on the scale, the size of our clothing, or the number of calories we eat or restrict. It's supposed to give us either confidence or lack thereof. And it's best if we can just avoid the numbers and focus more on nourishment. So like I said, I've grown to focus on strength when I work out as opposed to working out for punishment. And I focus on nourishment when it comes to food instead of restriction. And with rest, I've really come to value it and make my evening routine something sacred and to get those eight hours of sleep and to have a morning routine that sets my day right and to have those mindful minutes throughout the course of the day. All of these things have helped me to harness a positive self-image even though these negative self-image and doubts and fears creep back in all of the time. The way that you eat, move, rest truly does dictate how well you can harness the good and block the bad or let the bad flow in and flow out of you like I was saying. So really try to focus on when you're feeling these negative emotions, just ride them out, waiting for the good to come back again and doing your best to practice thought replacement, especially when you look at yourself in the mirror. I've recommended this book before, it's called Mirror Work. It actually has you sit down in front of the mirror and say positive and empowering things, uplifting things, self-love things to yourself. It's an amazing book. It can really help with the way that you see yourself. So if you've struggled with body image and or if you're pregnant and you feel like your body changing is uncomfortable to you, share in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. If you feel comfortable sharing your experience and what you're struggling with, or maybe what has worked for you, how you've overcome. Let's get a conversation going, get to know each other. I wanna to get to know who you guys are and where you come from. And like I said in the beginning, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest headquarters. We'd love to have you be part of our family. Give this video a thumbs up if it resonated with you, or if you know someone who it might help, maybe shoot it their way. And you can follow Dusty and I daily on Instagram. We're very active on there, especially on stories, at Aaron Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. Wish me luck, you guys. I'll probably tune in with a third trimester what I eat in a day video, second plant-based pregnancy, <laughs> something like that. I'm sure there will be a few more pregnancy videos spiced into our channel before I'm due in early July. So until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye, guys. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.